Mr. President, I come to the floor today as the chairperson of the Appropriations Committee, a committee I'm honored to chair to support the Consolidated Appropriations Act uh, for fiscal year 2014. This bill passed the House on Wednesday with a stunning and amazing vote of 359 to 67. The purpose of this agreement is to fund the operation of the federal government for the remainder of fiscal year 2014. The vote in the House, which I hope will be parallel here in the Senate, shows what working together based on civility, listening to each other, being willing to compromise but not capitulate on principle, but negotiating on what are the appropriate fiscal levels show we can get the job done. In today's era of shutdown, slowdown, slam down politics, where negotiating occurs on key cable TV rather than in committee rooms, we work together, setting aside partisan differences, working across the aisle and across the dome, we looked to find how we could put together a bill that both sides of the aisle and both houses could agree upon. This is what the American people deserve. Us doing the business of the country, legislating in due diligence and a regular order. They wanted a government that works as hard as they do and working under a very stringent deadline, we were able to do this. After three years of damaging cuts that have hurt our people, hurt our efforts to help the people, this agreement turns the corner. We recognized that we needed to focus on growth and jobs and lower the unemployment rate, but not increase our debt or our deficit. We worked very hard to do that, to increase the kind of public investments that the American people would approve of, keep America strong, keep our economy strong, and to do the diligent work that we need to do. This bill is something called an omnibus bill. It includes all 12 appropriations bills. That means we have 12 subcommittees, Mr. President, financial defense, health and human services, labor and education, energy, water, financial services, and each one has to do their work to fund this. Ordinarily, we would bring one bill up at a time, but that was not to be. So where we are is that this is a consolidated bill of all 12. We've been working on this since the president sent his budget to us this spring. We held over 50 hearings, listened and did due diligence, marked up our bills. We were ready to come to the floor in the fall but it was not to be. We had to wait for the budget committee to do its work to give us a top line so we could get to our bottom line. On December 18th, just before Congress, just before Christmas, Congress gave us that cap on discretionary spending. We knew what we wanted to spend, but again, we know we've got to be a more frugal government. We know we've got to be smart, not only about spending, but smart about saving, getting rid of dated, duplicative, and dysfunctional programs. And what we were able to do is do just that. On December 18th, we were given a cap on discretionary spending of a trillion O2. We met that cap. We worked nonstop over the holidays, resolving differences in both money and in certain policy areas. What we then do today is come here with an agreement that's bipartisan. I want to emphasize that. The agreement is bipartisan. It's bicameral. That means both sides of the aisle. And it's also been one of compromise but not on either side capitulating on principle. I'm proud to say that this agreement meets our national security needs. It ensures the readiness of our troops, keeps us safe at home, but it also meets the compelling human needs of our middle class and our most vulnerable. At the same time, 
It also invests in America's future by strengthening our physical infrastructure and also supporting research and development to save lives, spur growth and innovation in everything from life-saving biosciences to aeronautics. And we want to make sure we're looking not only at jobs today, but jobs tomorrow. Before I detail more about this agreement, I want to highlight one of the reasons I'm very proud of something we've done in this bill. Our legislation pending before the Senate restores the full cost of living adjustment for our working age disabled military retirees and survivors of our departed service members. Their COLAs were mistakenly reduced by 1% in the recent budget agreement. This agreement fixes that error. Now, I want them to make a note. It is limited in scope. It fixes the error for the disabled military retirees and departed service members. It is not the comprehensive pension reform that is necessary. We'll await for the presidential commission that will come before the Senate, and we will be able to implement and work on their recommendations in due time. I want to encourage my members that voting for this bill is to support the fix that helps our most vulnerable patriots. It is limited in scope, but an important down payment to restoring full COLAs for military retirees of working age who are either disabled or are part of the departed service members. Mr. President, this agreement provides for our national security. It has $11 billion more than current levels for operation and maintenance. $1 billion for the National Guard and Reserve so that our units are ready for missions overseas and are at home. The resources also support the Defense Department's $3 million active duty reserve and civilian employees. This bill, if it passes, eliminates the need for civilian furloughs in 2014. And also, it prioritizes readiness. The agreement also funds important areas in other protections of national security, an area that I'm very keenly interested in and is an increasing threat to our people and our economy is cybersecurity. One can only look at the headlines from Target to Neiman Marcus, 40 million Americans or more were hit by hackers that we expect came from a non-NATO member in a, a country based in a non-NATO um, member country. There is a growing nexus between organized crime and those who have predatory other predatory intents to the United States. We have $11 billion in here for cybersecurity for the Department of Defense, the FBI, Homeland Security, and important research agencies. This, air, this agreement also keeps its promises to veterans in terms of its health care, and we pay particular attention to the VA backlog disability. We believe that if you were in the front lines over there, you f shouldn't face a long line here when you've applied for your disability benefits. And working with the relevant authorizing committee, we believe we've been able to come up with it. This bill also makes important investments in America's human infrastructure and meets compelling human needs in health care, education, and child care. We've increased our investment in Head Start by $1 billion, making sure 90,000 more kids across the nation are part of an early, early childhood education programs that improve their school and reading and math readiness. We've also increased the child care development grants by $154 million, meaning 22,000 more lower income families will be able to afford uh, child care, 24,000 in Maryland alone. We believe in our committee that welfare should not be a way of life, but should be a way to a better life. Child care development grants enable women to move from welfare to work. And also, for those who are working at a minimum wage, where often full-time work means full-time poverty, that if you're going to work, child care should not eat up half of your already modest income. The child care development grant is a tool, along with the child care 
tax credit to enable people to really be able to work and make sure work worth it. We also were very conscious on both sides of the aisle of federal, the federal need to support special education. We do not want a continued unfunded federal mandate where we require certain programs for special needs children but do not meet the federal responsibility for paying for it. And so we have money in there for this. So from energy assistance to help with food and housing, we've been able to do there. But Mr. President, we believe the best social program is a job. There's no doubt about it. To be able to work at a full-time job that supports your family and lets you get on the opportunity ladder for the American dream is what we hope to do. We believe, many of us, that jobs that by helping America's infrastructure, we meet two needs. We have an aging, decrepit, sometimes even dangerous infrastructure. The money in this bill will go through important programs like the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund, uh, in terms of also Tiger Grants to help with transportation so that we can rebuild America's infrastructure and at the same time put America's to work on rebuilding our infrastructure. Also, at the same time, we believe that we need to look at the jobs tomorrow, where we fund the kind of basic research that only government can do, that leads to new ideas, that will lead to new thinking in the private sector, that will create the new jobs tomorrow. That means, for example, in the National Institutes of Health, we increase it $1 billion. It means they will be able to do 400 additional studies. It will also deal not only with our cures for things like cancer, but also the Brain Initiative will help also speed along the finding a cure or cognitive stretch out for Alzheimer's. This is good, good public investment. When we look at Medicaid funding, a, a cure for Alzheimer's or cognitive stretch out will not only save families the awful consequences of Alzheimer's, my father died of those, but it will also help our budget. When we look at Medicaid, 80% of the beneficiaries on Medicaid are children, but 80% of the money goes to long-term care for people who have either Alzheimer's or other neurological impairment diseases like Lou Gehrig, like Parkinson's, and so on. So when we can find a breakthrough on Alzheimer's, it'll also help lower the cost of Medicaid, and we'll be able to put it in other programs. Mr. President, there's many more things to be said about this bill, and I will say it later. I see my vice chairman is on the floor, and he will want to speak, and there are others who are also present that want. <clears throat> I will speak during the day, uh, but I want you to know I'm really proud of this bill. I think we did the job that was given us. We played the card hand that was dealt us, and what we've come up here is a good deal for the American people. We've tried to be smart about where we spent the money, and we tried to be really smart about how we tried to save money. So, Mr. President, I yield the floor and look forward to continued debate and passage of this bill.